Hi there, so if you watch my videos a lot, you'll recognize that I often use a piano like this. It's called a vintage vibe. Um, I use it 50% of the time probably because it sounds so beautiful and organic and it looks so sexy. Well, today I'm really, really proud to announce that I've got my own signature model. You can buy the Matt Johnson custom vintage vibe electric piano. It's got 73 keys. Uh, and it's based on a Fender Rhodes Mark I design. They've really gone deep into working out what made the Mark I the pinnacle of Fender Rhodes keyboards, because that's generally how it's regarded by many people. And turns out a lot of it was to do with the pickups. Um, so they studied how the pickups were made. They worked with Seymour Duncan, who were a famous pickup company, and they've emulated the quality of these original pickups. And it's resulted in this beautiful, retro, super warm sound. Um, it really does sound beautiful. I'm very proud to have my name put to it. It also has a bit of a game-changing trick up its sleeve. I'm going to show you that in a minute, so stay tuned. Meanwhile, I know a lot of you are going to ask me about the Rhodes Mark 8, so I might as well address it now. Um, good luck to them. You know, they're making their version of the Rhodes... Obviously, I'm affiliated with Vintage Vibe because I believe in them. You know, I bought my original Vintage Vibe piano. It wasn't given to me. I love it. You know, I've been using it for eight years and I know the quality of the sound and the build. And that's why I'm really into Vintage Vibe. You know, if you love the roads and you like the sound, get it, you know, but it, don't judge it on the name. Judge it on what you love the sound of. That's all I'd say. So the controls are based around a Mark I suitcase Rhodes. You've got an active insert under here, which means you can plug in any guitar pedal or whatever through the keyboard's amp. It's important to put it through the amp because it sort of colors the sound and gives you that vibe. You've got volume control, you've got a tone, which is basically just bass and treble, and you've got a tremolo, which is an auto pan, and you can change the intensity and the speed of it. That's all the same as a Mark I. Where it gets different is this little slider here. Because what you can do with this is you can change the voicing of the instrument. It's called variable voice control. Now, what's the voicing of the instrument? Basically, you'll notice everyone's got a different idea of what a Fender Rhodes sounds like. And there's a reason for that. Firstly, there's a few different models of them, active and passive, you know, Mark I, Mark II, blah, blah, blah. But also, you can individually voice the roads to your own personal taste and most roads aficionados will do that you can open it up and you can basically play around with where the tone bar is in relation to the pickup and it radically alters the sound from a very jazzy you know mellow sound into a really aggressive more funky sound depending on your playing style and tastes you can voice it differently thing is once you've done it you're stuck with it because it takes hours to do you know you have to take the lid down um and and that's your that's the sound of your roads from there on until now because this thing basically what it does is it moves the pickups in relation to the tone bar so you can go from a very fundamental sound meaning lots of pure low end coming through pure tones coming through to a very harmonic sound you pick up all those harmonics it gets much brighter and sort of gnarlier and thinner you can go all the way from one to the other uh, just with a slider so it's incredible because you can get almost any road sound you like let me show you i've got it at the moment in the middle with a tiny bit of pan on see how the uh, tone really can make a big difference as well. That's just in one place, okay? But let's put the tone back to the middle. And now let's move the slider all the way to the left.
beautiful fundamental tone, but I can lift up the top end and turn down the bass a bit, and then you can get a really belly sound, even though it's on that fundamental. to the middle. Okay, now let's go to the right and get more of a funky tone. Here you'll get more of a Herbie sound. A bit more to the middle. You know, it's just so versatile. Uh, let's go here, let's get this sweet tone. Then if you go all the way to the right, you get just harmonics. Really quite interesting sound in its own right. If you play low, you get like a feeling like it's an octave up. So you can hear how incredibly versatile it is. You can cover almost any tone you like. Um, it's never been done before. Uh, and I just think it makes it so versatile. Like for a studio, it's just amazing. And of course, for live, it's fantastic. Because if you're playing a mellow ballad at one point, you want a real soft, gentle tone like this. Then the next tune's a funky tune. You know, it's pretty amazing. All right, I'm going to play for you for a bit. And also, um, I went into a studio, a friend of mine's studio, uh, with a couple of great mates, Derek McKenzie and Ernie McCone. And they played drums and bass with me. I just wanted to sort of have a bash and see what it was like in a band situation. And it sounded wicked. And we were just basically pure improvisation, no rehearsal. It's all on the fly. You can check it out here. Um, enjoy.
Thank mm-hmm. you.